Hello, my friends. So this is an article that was suggested to me by Dorian J. So Dorian J has his own channel, and in my opinion, he is he is seriously under subscribed. So please go check out his channel. A link will be below. I think you will definitely appreciate it. The article that he sent me is from Christian Apologetics and Research Ministry. So let's look into these questions. <laughs> so this article is written by a gentleman named Matt Slick. So Mr. Slick is the president and founder of Christian Apologetics and Research Ministry. So he has nine questions. I guess they could have made 10 questions, but they just couldn't think of a 10th one. But anyhow, there are nine questions that he has for Wiccans. So I thought I would answer these. Number one, do the gods and goddesses of Wicca actually exist? So that's a good question, Mr. Slick. I think the best way to answer that is from my own perspective. To give you a little bit of background, if you are a Christian or Lutheran or Catholic or Protestant, you have pretty much a set dogma. You have a set certain way of belief, and then even there are there are different branches, etc., etc. As for Wiccans, there are different ways that people approach their belief. There are people who are polytheistic, duotheistic, animistic, and various other forms of belief. So everybody is encouraged to explore and find their own belief based upon what they perceive and how they believe. So there are people who personify and believe that the god and the goddess do actually exist. I happen to be a Wiccan who is atheistic, meaning that I do not believe that the gods and goddesses exist as conscious beings outside of myself. So that is how I perceive it. To be more specific, I am a Gardnerian witch, so that is a more traditional, or quote-unquote traditional, Wicca practice. And most traditional Wiccans have a god and a goddess. How they interpret that and view that is left to the individual. So to answer your question, again, from my point of view, they do not exist outside of myself. That is how I perceive them. Number two, if they actually exist, how do you know they exist? The same way that you know that God exists. Next question, Matt. Number three, if your tradition contradicts the tradition of another Wiccan, can they both be objectively true? Yes, absolutely, they can be. You can have the opinion that blue is the best color, and another person can say that red is the best color. That is no longer objective, that is subjective. So when it comes to beliefs, opinions, ideas, yes, it is subjective. Objective truth is there is a table, and both people objectively have to say, yes, there is a table, because you can see the table, you can feel the table. All of your five senses basically can prove to you that that table exists. When you're coming to ideas, again, philosophies, opinions, beliefs, it becomes subjective. Somebody can say, I believe in the God and the goddess. And another person can say, I don't believe in the God and the goddess. And though both of those positions can be equal, meaning that they can both exist simultaneously, unless there is some objective point where objectively they can say, yes, the God and the goddess do exist, or the God and goddess do not exist. And that can be objectively defined. Number four, how do you feel about believing in religious systems where you cater your religion to your desires? <laughs> wow, that is one loaded question there. Okay, so what is your desire? That is going to determine how you approach it. If your desire is to become rich and famous and have lots of mates around you, then maybe your religious system isn't the right. If It depends upon what is your objective. Is, if, is your objective just belief or is it your desire? I understand where you're trying to go with this loaded question here, <laughs> but I'm just going to tell you, People have desires, whatever those desires are. They're going to conform their life around how desperately they 
want those desires and if they really want to get those desires or not. So that is the answer to your question. Number five, if you cater, construct your religion according to our desires, then isn't it nothing more than your own invention? What? I don't understand the first part of that. How would someone cater and construct their religion according to your desires? That, for, that doesn't make any sense. That first part of that question doesn't make any sense, so I'm not going to answer that. Then, isn't it nothing more than your own invention? Well, that's a very good question. I think the farther and farther you go back in history, the more and more everything is invented. Philosophy is invented. Objects are invented. Ways of formulating ideas are invented. Belief is invented. So yes, all religious belief systems were invented at some point. The ones that were invented that did not challenge people or meet people's needs or just serve no real good purpose tended to die out. Those particular beliefs or religions, if you prefer to say it that way, that do speak to people and do give them some insight into the world and what it is that they struggle with every day, then yes, that appeals to them and that particular belief or religion is probably going to continue on. So if you are sort of hinting at the concept that Wicca is invented, yes, it was invented at a certain point. Your religion went through the same thing. It went through several different changes, but at some point, somebody wrote it down and it was invented. Is Wicca able to be shown to be false, or is it all non-verifiable ideas? That's another very good question. I think that we could replace the word Wicca with Christianity. Is Christianity able to be shown to be false, or is it all non-verifiable ideas? I think most Wiccans would honestly, if they, again, I'm can't really speak for all Wiccans, but I'm going to generalize here. I think that all Wiccans would, if put into this corner, would say they don't have any way to actually prove it, but it is what they believe based upon X amount, whatever experience that they've had. So that is how I would answer that question myself. I would say I don't have any way to prove that Wiccas, you know, proven to be false or non-verifiable ideas. I think they are verifiable ideas, but again, at some point I have to admit that yes, it breaks down and what does it mean? You know, where exactly, what is it based upon and what is, what do you consider to be verifiable of it? That again is, again, when you start getting into the realm of belief, ideas, and opinions, and philosophy, that begins to break down a little bit because those are not necessarily verifiable. Number seven, if your spells and incantations produce results, how do you know that the power behind the results is good or not? <laughs> it's, let's, the best comparison that I have heard, uh, magic, and again, this has very many different meanings to different people. From my point of view, magic is like electricity. It is there. You can use electricity to power a artificial lung. On the flip side, you can use electricity to do an electric chair. The energy itself is neutral. It is there. It is a power. And depending upon what you use it for can be determined as morally good or morally bad. Number eight, how do you know that there is not something more sinister behind Wicca? The way that we know is through our experience. It would be whatever our experience is. So I have never experienced anything sinister. So I do not believe that there is anything sinister behind Wicca. It is based upon my experience. So that is how I would answer that question. Number nine, why do you think that rituals dealing with candles, knives, and such are able to affect nature? Those are two unusual objects that you chose. You chose candles and knives. <laughs> There's only one knife in traditional Wicca and also non-traditional Wicca circles. There tends to be what is called an athame. An athame is a ritual knife that is used to cast the circle and other purposes in a circle. Candles are usually almost in everyone 
everyone's circle, and there's usually the candles to represent the god and the goddess, and also the four directions. So the rituals are not dealing with candles and knives. The rituals are actually dealing with nature. For example, if we were to do a ritual for the summer solstice, it would pertain to what the summer solstice means. It means that First of all, the sun is at the peak of its strength. The sun is masculine energy. It can also represent Apollo, Helios, other gods like that. The color of the June solstice. What is the color of the June solstice? What does it mean to us? What does it mean to celebrate the June solstice in our lives? Does it mean to us that we are getting rid of the old and the, and, and the dark and the, the power of sunlight and the power of truth and the power of the sun is coming into our lives. So our ritual is in celebration of nature or the celebration of a cycle of nature or the celebration of a cycle of someone's life or experience, what have you. Like, for example, a wedding, a funeral, or a coming-of-age ceremony. The objects that we deal with in the ritual are the candles and the knives. So the emphasis is placed upon what the purpose of the ritual is rather than what the objects are in the circle to perform the ritual. So I hope those answer your questions, Mr. Slick. If you have any further questions for me, you can contact me below. I think it would be interesting to eliminate the word Wicca and just flip these around and you can answer the same questions for yourself. How does God of Christianity actually exist? If he exists, how do you know he exists? If your tradition contradicts the tradition of another form of Christianity, can they both objectively be true? How do you feel about believing in the religious system where you cater your religion to your desires? If you cater, construct your religion according to your desires, then it's then isn't it nothing more than your own invention? Is Christianity able to be shown to be false, or is it all non-verifiable ideas? If your prayers and rituals produce results, how do you know that the power behind the result is good or not? How do you know that there is not something more sinister behind Christianity? Why do you think that rituals dealing with crucifixes and altars and such are able to affect the world? So, there you go, Mr. Slick. I hope to see your answers soon, and I hope it opens up a dialogue. Thank you so much, and bless you.